Hi friends, uh, this is the second lecture of uh, this week in risk-based engineering and the subject is uh, system reliability modeling and the topic we are discussing here is uh, advanced approaches and therein uh, we discussed the fault tree, dynamic fault tree approach um, in the previous lecture and now in this lecture uh, we will be discussing dynamic event tree. Uh, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, event tree and fault tree are at the core of uh, probabilistic risk assessment uh, and PRA uh, in turn is the pillar of uh, risk based engineering and around that uh, many tools and methods uh, have been developed uh, to get as uh, correct as possible in respect of the output, in respect of the insights. So. Uh, um, I can, I can uh, imagine uh, any scientist or researcher who was dealing in uh, uh, static event tree modeling, uh, he would have had a uh, desire that uh, uh, each uh, event or uh, each response of the plant uh, takes, uh, allows in the static event tree uh, only to go to the two state that is success state and failed state. But in actual condition, uh, there are many states which uh, one would like to analyze, like one could be healthy state, uh, another could be degraded state, uh, or, uh, and third could be threat to safety function state, or um, some more events or scenario, and last would have been a completely failed state. But that uh, opportunity uh, uh, directly as in the software platform we use is not available. So here dynamic event tree, um, uh, even though it is a um, dynamic in the sense that the way it captures for fault tree, uh, the dynamic scenario in time and uh, uh, special domain both, uh, it also uh, allows uh, consideration of many more events uh, that we'll see now. Um, when we come to our discussion. The branching of the nodal point in the static event tree is binary, either it failed or operating as I had mentioned and is governed by success and failure criteria. Then accident scenario ev evaluation for real time situation can be modeled more realistically with the treatment of scenario in temporal domain as well as uh, spatial domain uh, and more branching with more branching, more than two branchings. Uh, due to the nature of dynamics, the number of event sequences uh, can be complex and very large to the extent they might pose a computational constraint. So uh, in event tree also, the kind of limitation which was there in the fault tree uh, because of many combination of events, uh, computational uh, limitation might be problem. But again, let us see uh, what is the limit of that and try to address as many scenarios as possible uh, because if, if you want to go, get to the reality. Okay. Uh, we will consider the simplified methodology of dynamic event tree modeling um, by, uh, I think it was developed by one of our uh, Costa and Sui uh, to illustrate modeling of the dynamic event tree in this section. The dynamic event tree uh, methods has been discussed to present the essential feature characteristic of dynamic event tree and here the model, uh, the eventual objective will be to get a spectrum of uh, uh, accident sequence conditions and there we might be in those conditions which are relevant, which are not relevant or safety significant but then we want to get as many spectrum as possible so that we have that confidence that no scenario has been left out because each scenario available it gives a, a scope of window uh, for plant operation to sort or see the possibility of a certain uh, scenario where they can resort to to uh, work on the plant during, during emergency condition. Uh, salient uh, features of the dynamic inventory are uh, given in this uh, uh, presentation. Let us go to the uh, what we are trying to uh, discuss. Uh, this illustration, it shows there are two events, A, comma B, and how they can be modeled. At first level, it is AB, then second, thing, uh, second level, it can become a B, A complementary B, A complement A, A B complementary sorry, and A complementary B, and 
A complement, B complement. Now, if I take each node here, that is AB, AB will give us, give, uh, give me, uh, rather here we have designed it for four events, uh, rather co combinations are four, because one event and its complement, so it will give us four scenario. So AB, which is common to all the uh, branches here, and A complement B, and then A complement B, uh, A complement B complement, uh, like that. And then for A, compli A complement of B, you will give AB, A complement of B, uh, A complement B, A complement B complement. So like that, we have 16 uh, end states over here. Um, in real time, there are more system uh, than two systems. So one can imagine if there are 12 safety system support that includes support system and all that. So how many we are managing with two events. So uh, this may need a state explosion. You know, each branch, branch is giving uh, a, a giving an excellent sequence and in nutshell it is giving a state. So DET as the experience suggests is computationally very demanding and requires that formulation of function and set of associated variables. So uh, what is the way forward? A lot of R&D is going on and very computationally efficient methods are being developed uh, and uh, pro I probably we hope uh, that in the coming time uh, this uh, situation uh, will be resolved and we will be having our in fact, even if we take, uh, take in static mode, our each event tree runs uh, in, in, the, in the pages uh, and, uh, and then we have something like uh, 1000 to 2000 accident sequences and that we reduce by categorization into some number of things and all that. So uh, with these things, uh, we will have, uh, even though we will have a seamless uh, event sequences, uh, but then uh, the work also will increase or that work of segregation also will have to be done. Um, uh, uh, in a computerized methods. So, typical characteristic set um, for event tree characterization, now we have seen a simple uh, uh, dynamic event tree. Now, uh, let us see what all the uh, different characteristic conditions, nodes, status and all that. So, let us say first we discuss branching set. Plant parameters condition that determine the status of a plant and safety function operator identification of the status and the proposed action in response to plant diagnosis. So this is expressed by branching sets. Okay. So uh, let's say XA, XB is the branching set. Okay. And since there are two binary events, XA can be a value of 0 and or 1 for success and failure respectively. The same argument applies to XB. When the number of safety functions increase, say, uh, to a number n, the branching set will be xa, xb, xc, xn. So that many branching sets will be there, there with us. Now, uh, let us see how plant status is uh, characterized in the dynamic inventory. So it is defined by branching variables and plant process variable. Uh, how it is defined? Uh, each uh, branch in the dynamic event tree uh, has an end state and frequency associated with. In event tree, uh, we give the uh, characterization of the accident sequence by number or by name and then by its frequency or simply by cut set, uh, cut set name and its frequency. Uh, and that is characterized by uh, XA and XB. The probability of respective end state that is the plant state determined by that branch under consideration. For example, for two systems, there are 16 end states. We saw in our illustration on uh, previous slide, there were 16 end branches. Uh, that lead to four plant states. There were four uh, branches from the emerging from the first, uh, uh, first uh, bifurcation. The plant states grow geometrically with number of safety functions. So, uh, the plant state working out uh, uh, is a, is a uh, job uh, which requires uh, computer uh, computational efficiency uh, uh, in the dynamic event tree. And then branching rules. What should be the rule for branching? 
branching occurs at fixed point in time this is one rule okay now it can be related to some equipment also so let's say uh, time t1 and 2 for t2 for x1 xa and xb that we have we have uh, said however keeping in view the requirement of specific problem the rules for branching could be for example change in status of the safety function so uh, if one safety system fails the branching will go switch over to the next uh, next uh, uh, second safety system b or an event enforcement externally one safety system let us say eccs has failed so manual injection should occur, should occur and that should be reflected by the event tree generation of det uh, requires algorithm to interpret this information from plant variables so uh, it uh, it is very difficult to do these kind of th uh, uh, simulations uh, manually and we have to have a generalization uh, of these events so that means there is a algorithm there is a software which will uh, detect uh, this kind of uh, uh, branching rules and these branching rules will be formulated and it will be checked for application at various branching uh, levels the advantage of this generalized model is that it avoids computational resources because for example the use of fixed interval uh, will require a small delta t to capture the instant uh, of change in the plant safety function status so uh, so it is uh, com uh, it is it can be in short it can be automated uh, in the uh, dynamic inventory then expansion rules they are very important uh, cut off criteria is to be set up so sometimes we terminate the analysis uh, by giving uh, a frequency of tensor of minus 5 minus 6 we do not want to go beyond that so like that uh, expansion rules uh, can also be developed and implemented in dynamic uh, inventory algorithm so so um, so it can be arrest the uncontrolled growth of excellent sequences other criteria could be termination of plant into a safe state this is a very old uh, algorithm uh, that uh, only events which are unsafe will be considered for core damage frequency so something like this can be built and all safe events will be left out because they are they are not required for giving a core damage frequency uh, uh, statement okay so these are the rule we are talking about then we let's talk about the tool problem specific model uh, for a plant behavior stress condition frequency uh, conditional frequency of operator state and changes now uh, uh, defining tools and methods uh, is a academic exercise or r and d exercise there are two major category of tools used in dynamic senior evaluation deterministic and probabilistic sometimes uh, the deterministic that means plant condition expressed by plant variables uh, process and safety variables uh, that can form the tools and methods which are built into the system uh, such as the value of some process variable the probabilistic uh, tools pra software provide the estimate of frequency r so sometimes frequency or unavailability this information uh, comes from pra that can become the screening criteria or you can enabling criteria in uh, dynamic inventory so with this uh, a, a brief discussion on uh, uh, DTM major uh, characteristic nodes, uh, uh, status tools. So uh, we uh, we come to a major observation on potential application of DT. Uh, application of dynamic inventory and inventory approach are increasing as independent studies as well as as part of risk assessment. In fact, there are uh, there are uh, examples in literature wherein dynamic PRA. Uh, also has been discussed so that means inventory has entered into the pr plant prm model also um, now the capabilities and all the all those things will have to be seen but then uh, there is a there is an increasing interest in modeling dynamic dynamic inventory uh, in, instead of uh, the computational uh, requirement and all that the challenges involved in dynamic modeling and application of these approaches are requirement of this we know repeatedly we have been discussing uh, modeling of large DFT and DET, um, small uh, DET, yes, it is a very good idea, but for a complex safety critical system like nuclear plant DET, uh, it will uh, it will be uh, a special effort, I would say. And identification of root and terminal events, um, and uh, not only identification, 
in, in its generalization also. That means it works in all the anticipated and unanticipated condition and it should not lead to, uh, like in, in software, uh, there was a terminology called core dump. It should not result into core dump or failure of the computation. Uh, so, so, and then next is selection of set of deterministic and probabilistic parameters. Um, the, uh, it can be, th uh, th uh, we can think it like this, that this particular thing, uh, as it evolves, and uh, people and the researchers get experience, it will get matured and then uh, a integrated software is developed wherein all these methods in generalized forms, uh, they are available. And selection of time steps. Selection of time steps is basically uh, requirement of, uh, uh, requirement of uh, like for a transient condition. Uh, we require very small, small steps, but as the plant is operating in a steady state, so uh, the the speed of uh, uh, data input should also be governed by uh, by that during normal normal operation the data input should be small and spread out uh, while it's in transient condition there should be a switch uh, which can enhance the speed of data collection so that the transient status of the plant till it reaches stabilization can also be captured in the inventory so, uh, the binary decision diagram bdd uh, abbreviated is uh, was uh, introduced by Brian in 1987. So, uh, and uh, in 1993, uh, he proposed, um, Rousey, he proposed a application of uh, approach to fault tree analysis. So, um, the BDD approach provides an accurate solution because it does not require approximation inherent, inherent to the uh, traditional uh, solution methods in uh, classical fault tree analysis or even that for the better event tree analysis. However, due to higher computational requirement, the present uh, form of BDD has limitation when it comes to large size fault tree, uh, typically to PRA studies due to combinatorial explosion. Uh, BDD provides an efficient uh, solution, particularly for small or medium sized fault trees. The BDD analysis is largely governed by uh, efficiency of uh, reduction algorithm and this also becomes a limitation as there is only one heuristic. The first step in BDD analysis uh, is reduction of given fault tree by employing reduction algorithm. BDD is a bottoms of approach. Um, like we are used to analyzing fault tree from top to bottom but in BDD uh, the initiating or starting point is uh, the basic event. And from basic event, the construction of BDD starts, as we can see in the. So, uh, as we have seen that uh, the BDD procedure starts from the uh, basic event tree, and basic event uh, in BDD uh, can have two the two branches, um, then edge, that is uh, one edge and else edge, that is zero edge. So, uh, if we have uh, Shannon's uh, decomposition theorem for Boolean logic, uh, we have, we have um, Boolean uh, formulation over a set of uh, Boolean variables which is called F. And here, um, this Boolean formulation involve um, characterizing Xi uh, into this uh, formulation uh, x is equal to 1 plus x complement wherein fxi is equal to uh, uh, 0 and uh, this is where this i uh, lies between 1 and n. Now it can be uh, expressed as if then probably in our production rule in intelligent system rule based system we would have seen uh, this is analogous to that if then else. Uh, uh, rules, ITE they call. Uh, this is uh, basically an heuristics uh, as follows. F is equal to if then else x1 fx1 is equal to 1 comma fxi is equal to 0. And here if we translate into our uh, binary node, uh, it gives then edge uh, which is 1 edge and uh, where x, uh, x is equal to 1 and x, uh, x is equal to 0, um, which is called else edge 
or zero edge. So we have one edge, zero edge, where x uh, is uh, uh, assigned the value of one, and another uh, else edge, uh, it is assigned the value of zero. Um, x i is equal to b uh, uh, implies f evaluated at x i is equal to b, and then b is Boolean constant having value of either uh, either as zero or one. Shannon's decomposition has uh, then edge as one edge or else edge as zero edge uh, as shown in the figure. So this is basically fundamentals of uh, uh, Boolean formulation uh, that we have come to uh, wherein Shannon's decomposition they uh, translate um, uh, uh, formulation of f into uh, x into fx1 uh, plus f uh, x into fx0 uh, is equal to uh, 0, 1. So, where and the uh, i lies between 0 and 1 and this is the node we have and its translation into then edge and else edge. <coughs> Let us see how we um, translate it. Let us consider the BDT above in this and then as we discussed we have got x having value 1 and uh, value 0. The BDD approach used for fault tree analysis referred as reduced order BDD uh, is then reduced from, uh, so uh, reduced form. So we have this uh, in uh, some of the handbooks, uh, these approaches have been discussed in detail. For each basic event, uh, BDD is drawn uh, from Shannon's decomposition, that is one zero characterization, and basic event can be represented as shown uh, here in the figure. Given x is the root basic event, the BDD represents of the uh, addition of two basic event. If there are two basic events x and y, uh, then uh, their representation in, in N gate or in R gate can be seen in uh, we discuss here. So this is a very interesting example. Uh, we are using uh, in R gate and N gate there are two examples and uh, how we uh, translate x plus y uh, basic event uh, into it's a re reduced form actually. Uh, so let us see the case of R gate. In R gate x plus y and x is also having 1 0 and y is also having 1 0 as in line with BDD formalism. Okay? And then the uh, Boolean logic that we, we have studied the Boolean logic uh, in our previous lectures. Uh, but here the one rule that is 1 plus x is equal to 1 and 0 plus y is equal to y. So, so uh, now if we have these events, uh, further it x has got one, one, 1 0 and it, it gets uh, interacted with y. So y is 1 0 and, uh, uh, and then x 0 y. Uh, this again finally if it is uh, boolean reduction is done so uh, x and the branch x has got a one branch a one another branch is y and y has got one zero this is the reduction that we have done similarly for end gate we have s uh, per boolean reduction logic uh, uh, one into x is equal to x and zero into y is equal to zero so this is basically uh, basic fundamental uh, Boolean law which will be playing out over here. So x multiplied by our end get uh, y, a and y, um, both have uh, branches 1, 0, uh, for y also we have 1, 0 and then again the interaction start with the uh, x interaction start with the y uh, in a product form and then we have product and finally uh, y has uh, are reflecting on both the branches and we have y, y 1 0 uh, 1 0 but the interaction are y into 1 and y into 0 so that again further get reduced to x y and 1 and uh, 0 branches are there um, uh, on the other side actually. So we have seen the end and r reduction and this is basically um, for generating the reduced uh, fault tree for uh, as part of BDD. Okay. Now let us take the example, uh, real time example. First step is to reduce or simplify the fault tree. Uh, so when we take up this BDD uh, diagrams, uh, 
uh, first you re reduce the fault tree. So let us say one of the simpler, simplest approach in reducing the fault tree is um, xy plus xz is equal to t top event. So if we look at the fault tree, we have uh, we have t uh, and then or gate is the operational gate and the branching happens for two end gates. So on uh, first that is left side end gate we have x and y and right side end gate we have x into z okay so now if i have to uh, if i have to do boolean reduction we have t is equal to x into y and on right, right side um, plus x into z because there is an or gate in between so t is equal to xy plus xz finally if i take x common then it becomes uh, uh, t is equal to x into y plus z so uh, we can see here the reduced fault uh, reduced fault tree uh, wherein uh, this uh, this reduction uh, can be seen and uh, we have t here it was a expanded fault tree now it is a reduced fault tree and here t is uh, uh, x which is here and the other branch is or gate x plus z this uh, now how we do the boolean reduction so we have x into y okay and y into y and this is connected with the z so if we can we can like 0 1 logic or 1 x logic we can have uh, x uh, 1 0 okay and then y z and on other side a branch 0 branch we have y z is equal to again the same thing and finally we get a output x y z uh, in uh, with one branch they are meeting and this is or how we uh, reduce the boolean fault tree okay uh, the above example illustrates illustrate the pro broad procedure involved in deriving bdd from reduced fault tree x plus yz the key element of this procedure is ordering of the event including uh, identification of root node and the terminal node the root node is the one which uh, with which the bdd is initiated so for us it was x y z okay uh, uh, example given the x node in the uh, root, uh, is the root node and the last uh, tell 0 1 is called the terminal node the root node is the one with which the bdd is initiated and here it was uh, root node was x node uh, and the last tell binary node zero, uh, one, zero 01 are called the terminal nodes uh, for a large fault tree the procedure uh, is complex even though there are some uh, some applications of bdd for event tree analysis this approach has not been popular part of um, pra based on this it can be observed that further r and d is required to make bdd approach an integral part of pra the the scope of this uh, section was to introduce BDD approach uh, and discuss its potential for PRA applications. Thank you.